Welcome back to the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast. Today, I'm going to be talking with my good friend, Cammie from the blog Tidbits. She and I are friends in real life and of course, virtual friends. That's where we were friends first. She has the most beautiful line of planners that she designed for basically her own life. She felt like there wasn't anything out there that really helped her to plan in the way that she needed as a busy homeschool mom. She also does a little homesteading, has a blog. And so we're going to chat planning and goal setting, how to fit it all in, how to organize your day so that you can get things done and maybe accomplish any kind of goals that you might have, whether it's making a sourdough starter, sewing, starting a business, whatever it may be and fit that in as a busy mom if that's something you desire or just how to get the stuff done that you need to get done to keep your home which is not just a just because there is a lot that goes into that and i know that full well so we're going to talk all about all of that so join us as we discuss planning goal setting getting it all done as a busy mom homemaker whatever you may be i think everybody's probably thinking about like goal setting and planning right now, at least maybe they're going to push it off for a couple more weeks. So they have to think about it officially, but goals and start fresh. I know it's, it's kind of, it's an itch. I think we all get (laughs) just that you just, I'm craving the, the chaos and the craziness and then go, go, go to just kind of settle. Right. And let my mind kind of get ahead of the activities. And I think it's just, it's a natural inclination this time of year. So. Yeah, definitely. And then it's good time to start fresh. I actually was just making a list today of all of the things that I'm going to organize. So things from like my makeup bag to the pantry, (laughs) there's just like so many things that. So you wrote them all down. Like you're making a list. Yes. I make lists. I do make lists. Yeah. You know me, you have to teach me how yeah. to be a better planner. I'm, I'm good about some <laughs> things try. and not other things. That's for sure. So well, we, we can, here. we can dive in right there. So the necessity yeah. of planning, why it's so important. I mean, I'm a good planner when it comes to the business. And really the only reason I am is once I started hiring a team, I had to be there was no way right. that I could just be like, oh, let's just all do this today. And everybody's going to be okay with that. I had to, you know, lay it all out, but I can't say I'm the best in other areas of life. So how has, I know you're a natural planner, but how has planning yeah. helped your life? My life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's basically survival of the fittest, I think, you know, and I, yeah. it's funny because ever since I've delved into the planning world, Um, I see where people are in different stages and, you know, I have a lot of followers and readers that are older and retired and they talk about how they're past the need to plan. And I look forward to that day. (laughs) And then there's the young moms that it's just, you know, your life is so full of kids that there's not a whole lot of extra, but I think there are stages in our life where we're trying to throw in a lot of things on our plate and planning becomes pretty essential. One, I believe for stress management, like that's, we need to be able to realize that what we've put in our lives is manageable and is not going to cause us unneeded stress, make us crazy, and then help us be productive to reach those goals or those ambitions that we have or necessities, you know, it's yeah, just, just keeping comes, the, in the, the laundry right. and the pantry organized. Right. And like you mentioned, like organizing makeup bags or spaces, um, if we can make a plan and fit that into our life, rather than just trying to do everything spur of the moment where distractions come in, I think it's, it's very beneficial for yeah. our mental health, for our relationships and just, just our whole life. Yeah. Because there's so many things like when you're, you're a mom and you have just so many little things, like there's a birthday party this weekend and there's, you know, I, I need to make sure that we actually, my daughter is turning 13 tomorrow. And so we have a birthday party. She wanted to have her own birthday party this time. And so, you know, you need little, little things for that. They have activities. Like you just got back from taking your kids to piano practice. <laughs> yeah. And so I will usually each day make a list. Now it's just in my notes. I'm not like the best at 
having them in the right places probably. But you say your notes, are you saying like on a piece of paper? I know you used to you do the phone, but you've kind of- Yeah, I just keep it on my versus- laptop, but it is uh-huh. kind of, I need to convert to paper planning and I have not yet done it because now that I have a dumb phone, <laughs> right? <laughs> I have these things in my computer and then the computer doesn't come with me. And then I'm like, what was that again? That's, that's true. So it's a little bit difficult, but each day I have laid out a manageable amount of things. Even I will write down, like if my child had piano practice, that would be on, you know, Thursday, I will have Thursday and then just have all the obligations I have. And usually a large goal, which we're probably getting ahead of ourselves here, but I'll break it down into things that seem manageable. So that way each day I'm not doing anything. Like you said, that's too overwhelming. Right. Or setting yourself up for unrealistic expectations. I mean, that's when stress is just going to pile on us and yeah. collapse. Us. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. But I find that breaking it down into small bits and having a plan does make it to where I'm not completely overwhelmed by the number of things that I have to do. Cause I can put them on, you know, each day breaking it down. Mm-hmm. And I think it's finding the right system that will allow you to do this, to plan your day in a realistic manner. And there are a lot of systems out there. And, um, and that's why I think it'd be fun to, it's fun to hear your method. It works for you. And, you know, for me, I had to kind of develop my own system because (laughs) my own planners, because I just found that nothing out there was quite flexible enough yet structured enough. And so that's where, you know, my tidbits planners kind of came in. But um, didn't you say you also keep track of some things like, is it Trello that you use? Mm -hmm. I do Trello. So Trello is where I have the big picture for my team to log in and be like, this is what's going to post this week. These two big projects, right? Yeah, the podcast. I have a list of things this week. We're posting all of these things. But then my daily breakdown Mm -hmm. is how I'm going to get that to happen on my end. Like I need to take this photo today. Today I'm going to meet up with Cami and we're going to have a podcast. So that way I can post this week for that. And then I'm going to photograph a certain soup. And then I got to film me making the soup. So that'll go in my what we eat in a week video. And usually also I find that I can stack several, make like kill several birds with one stone. If you plan properly, you can see how you could puzzle piece this together and make this work for uh, Instagram posts, a YouTube video, a blog photography, a podcast all in one. If you plan it out, you can see that. So tell me about your system. If you don't plan out all those pieces, then you're trying to like do it spur of the moment and your brain is firing, thinking of too many things when I just fall apart. (laughs) Well, yeah, I've had days for sure where I don't have that much I need to get accomplished with the blog. And I write really ambiguous things like work on this and there's not a concrete. And then at nap time, that's my only time to work is nap time. So then when nap time comes around, I'm like, what should I work on? And that's when I get the least done is when I, if I, if I just have to knock it out, I can get done incredible amounts of stuff. Right. And a little tip there that I found, if you know, you have limited time, which I'm guessing everyone listening to your podcast is working with nap yeah. time or, you know, if, if we have certain projects, it's for a very limited amount of time. And in order to not get distracted, I have found that if I just number those things rather than just a list or order them consecutively, that really helps. Like look at that number one and don't look at anything else before number one's done. Right. Mm-hmm. Because it's just, it can feel way too much if you're just looking at this running list. And that's why I kind of gravitated from just a running list or sticky notes. And I needed, I needed each, like each month, each week, each day, each hour to feel more structured and more controlled so that I wasn't just looking at these huge lists. And that's when I would just get so overwhelmed. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So what is your system like for you? Cause I know I'm going to have an intro in the beginning, but you're a business owner, blogger, YouTuber, all the things, mom, homeschooler, just like me, you have a lot and and dabbling in farming as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. I mean, you you sound like a crazy person. (laughs) I'm the same way. Right. (laughs) Right. We're in good company. (laughs) Yeah. So my system, of course, um, and I guess I'll show this for the YouTube 
followers, but yeah, yeah. So I have a paper planner and I create these. This is called the tidbits day planner. And, um, that is kind of my system. It's kind of that trickle down system. So, you know, I look forward to the new year cause I have some yearly planning pages that if you're saying like, okay, I need January to kind of get my house in order. I'm going to start with this space. And then, so you, then you can break that down. You don't want to attack January and think I'm going to organize the whole entire house or I'm going to, um, I don't know, take on this big project. What you do is you plan it a year at a time, get your priorities straight so that you can stay on track. So that's kind of, it's just a couple of really basic yearly planning pages and then you take each month in its stride and you kind of go back to those yearly goals and try to break them down in the month. And then the same thing, there's a weekly spread that allows me to figure out what needs to happen that week. And then I can take those big weekly tasks and break them down into each day. And then I can look at my hours in that same weekly spread and figure, okay, so today we've got piano, gymnastics, we've got a choir concert mm -hmm, tonight. Mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot of time for me to work. So what's in this to, do, to daily to-do list can't be too much. And so that's kind of my system is just looking at it at a big picture and then breaking it down even by the hour to make sure I'm being realistic and then, you know, my planner is super flexible. I haven't, like all the headings are empty. They're open. I haven't assumed what anyone should put there because all of our lives are so unique. So, and so. Um, yeah, it sounds like my system, but in a much more organized way, right? honestly. <laughs> and when you have the hours, I do that in, a, again, a very unorganized way, but right. like, there's certain You're still things doing it. that. There are, because there are certain things that I can get done when it's not nap time. There right. are things like pay this bill, um, send this email, things mm -hmm. that they can be all around me making a mess, even making lunch and filming the lunch for a YouTube video or something. I can do all of that while they're awake, but there are certain things that if they're not between one and three in the afternoon, I cannot do them. And so I have to prioritize during the, these hours, do not work on planning my blog. Don't even open your email. No, like this needs to be the time when I need the quiet. Mm -hmm. And so having those hourly, that does help you to focus on the right task at the right time. Because like you said, there's, we have all those kind of things too. We have music, we have music context, we have gymnastics, you know, there's always yep. something that we're having to go to. Juggle. And, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So What's your goal setting process like? Are you thinking about New Year's goals right now? And how do you make it to where they're not so overwhelming that you actually don't get them done? Because they need to be possible for them to even mean anything. Like we can't say, I want to lose 50 pounds or, you know, something like super right. difficult. Yeah. Um that's a great question. I think definitely it's something we're all thinking about. Um, I guess I kind of have two categories, you know, goals as in self-development, character development or whatever, you know, <laughs> and then like task oriented goals. And so for the task oriented goals, I'm definitely breaking those down. I'm not going to expect myself to, um, you know, make massive growth on the blog or YouTube channel in one month. It's going to be how, okay, if this is where I want to be in a year, what needs to happen every month in order to do that? And that's why just those two pages in the yearly planning are super helpful or anyone can do that in any planner they have or a notebook, take each month at a time. And as far as like, I guess like the self-development goals or self-improvement I'm a, I have a more gentle approach with that. I don't want to expect too much of myself. And that's more just, I would say, just integrated very, in letter, very little bite-sized pieces every day. And so in my planner, I have a habit tracker actually in the corner. Okay. And it's just got room for three little habits. Um, and like, so I'll do things like I want to do like 10 to 20 minutes of yoga every day. And that helps my stress that helps me move my body and not get so tight and tense. Or I want to take a walk 20 minutes a day and just clear my head. So th 
those are more of the things that I just make sure are little bits of self-care or self-development kind of integrated in, into each day. So that's my thoughts on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, mine, mine are similar. I have a more difficult time with the self-development ones than I do the action oriented ones. Right. You know, I'm able to be, see certain things and okay, I can knock out this amount of whatever it may be for me. I'm a blogger. So it'll be this amount of blog posts or YouTube videos or whatever. Whereas the ones that are like, I want to start doing this more, I struggle to get those actually accomplished. <laughs> Yeah. And they're a struggle. And that's why I found that just like, just focusing, like, even if you only need to focus on one, there was a time in my life where I just knew I needed to get better sleep. <laughs> and so I wasn't focusing on losing a ton of weight at that time or making sure I was a, writing in my journal every day or being like, it was just that one thing I knew it was kind of like, the tide that would rise all boats. If I could get more sleep, I could be better all around. Mm -hmm. So that's my suggestion there. Like one thing. And then just, I would just set my alarm for five minutes earlier. I would make sure my phone was off an hour before I went to bed. So I wasn't getting that stimulation. And then just moving that clock up five minutes every week. And it changed, it changed so much. It really was the tide that <laughs> lifted all the boats. Right. So, yeah. you know, those things, I just baby steps. I've tried to several times in my life, try to take on more than I can. Right. Right. There is something to be said for doing one thing at a time, even with business goals. I always, I'm not trying to add several things in one year. It's like this year we'll try podcasting. Right. This year we will try I did that from the beginning. The first year mm -hmm. it was Instagram. Then it was blogging. I mean, I, I already had my blog, but as far as the focus more, and then it, yeah. And then YouTube and then Facebook. And it was kind of like five years of focusing on one thing at a time, pretty much. Yeah. I think it's a great method. Yeah. So tell me, this was something we saw babies <laughs> waking up. <laughs> no baby. Um, this was something you mentioned to me. So, um, I love the idea of it, but what are your suggestions for adding more to your plate, but having less stress? Because there are lots of things that we want to add, but we can't possibly see how that would happen. I get asked that constantly. I want to do right. this thing, but there is no possible way I have any more time or anything left in me whatsoever. Yeah. And I kind of kind of came to this crossroads. I think it was the beginning of last year. You know, I wanted the planner business to be bigger, have the tidbits linen. <laughs> I think we had this conversation yes, at a retreat. On our, yeah. And then of course the blog and I wanted to work on my YouTube channel and I had like a real hard look at myself. I'm like, I can't keep adding more to my plate. I mean, that's a great metaphor for life. We literally only have so much room. And the funniest thing happened in my life. Like I just felt like more kept coming. Like I got called to serve the young women in our church. I got like just some other needs came up in the family. Like I was literally thinking what needs to get off my plate and more kept getting on. <laughs> and I waited through these couple of months thinking something's got to go. Something's got to go or that's going to all spill over. And what instead I found was happening very naturally was that I was teaching myself to basically build a structure around my plate to be able to hold more. So <laughs> I don't know, maybe oh. you can visualize it as yeah. <laughs> you've got a plate, but now you've got to build a structure in order now to you got like a nine by 13 dish. Plate. You got to uh -huh. build structure. So you can actually hold more in your life with uh -huh. the same boundaries. And I do, and I found three things that majorly helped me to accomplish that. One we've already talked about is, um, and so I won't go too much into it, but we can't let our health, you know, our mental, our physical, spiritual, we can't let that slide. It doesn't have to be a lot every day, but we have to be taking care of ourselves, like the foods we eat. And so I feel like if you're going to add more to your plate, more to your life, don't let that slide. <laughs> don't burn the midnight oil to add more. You're going to fall apart. 
And so doing little things like a little bit of yoga every day, going on a walk where I'm, I'm not listening to a podcast. There's no input. There's no output. My head's clear. Those things were vital for me to survive that time. So one, taking care of yourself. And then two, what I found I had to do and I started doing was building more support. Like I talked about, like, if you want to become a cupcake stand, <laughs> you've got to build support. And that can take many forms. Like for me, it was okay. If I want to do more business, well, then I can't homeschool. But what if I got help to homeschool? And so, you know, and you're doing the same. Your husband's home to help you homeschool. I don't know how you would manage it, manage it all if you didn't have yeah. that support. So my husband's not home yet. He still feels like he needs to go into work. But, you know, I decided I would be okay hiring a tutor. So I get this college girl to come a couple hours a day. She helps with the kids. Um, I just expected more of my kids to help around the house. Like we right. really can't do it all. We have to build that support. Mm -hmm. And once we do that in different areas of our life, it really just, you can add more and you can be less stressed because you know, things yeah. are being taken care of and you're not doing it all. Yeah. So. And I think there, there are times for a sprint. I will say mm -hmm. when I first to get to the point where my husband could come home, there was times of burning the midnight oil. Oh yeah. Kind of burning the candle at both ends there. That's not sustainable, but it did need to happen for me to like get the snowball up to the top of the mountain type of thing. But yeah, now on the other side of that, I hire stuff for my business constantly. Mm -hmm. Oh, the other day, whenever we were in a text group and somebody was saying, yeah. you know, ask about hires, I was like, this, this text is going to take me a long time to send. <laughs> so I didn't actually send it yet. Yeah. When I started saying all the people I hire, I'm like, I'm like oh, I yeah. forgot this one. And yeah. this one, I, I have built a lot of support. It's out of yes. necessity. So much because you have to, there was no way I could keep adding things. I'm actually going to be hiring somebody to manage my podcast coming up soon here. Um, she's starting in the first part awesome. of January, but there are Every time I bring on something new, I have to bring on someone new, some kind of support. Like you said, there's, there's no way yeah. one person, you know, we're it. talking about this as a business approach and all your listeners might not be, you know, yeah, they they're not yeah. busy yeah. moms and they want to maybe, maybe they want to start a business or maybe they have a hobby they really want to get into. Well, trade neighbors to watch kids. Um, like build support other ways, but it's just absolutely essential to add more and to, to decrease your stress. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, we hire people and we have to look, is that worth the finances? Do I think hiring something will actually propel my business forward? And most of the time the answer is definitely a yes. Mm -hmm. Two hours of me being able to focus on my work while a tutor's out there helping my kids absolutely worth it. It's yeah. <laughs> I can, and I bet you get me. more done in that small amount of time than oh, yeah. most people get done all day because it's your only time that you <laughs> exactly. have. That's oh, how my nap time done. is because <laughs> all day I have children with me because Luke, we both tag team the homeschool. Like I do the math and I do the writing with the kids and then mm -hmm. he does reading and history and things like that. But during the times when he's doing that, I have little kids and babies so my only time is this, and it still involves children <laughs> <laughs> to some extent, but, yeah. but yes, I also was thinking when you were saying that, that there is a certain muscle though, that you develop as you do things that are really hard that stretch you. Because I think about whenever I first was a homemaker, I was a homemaker for nine months because we got married. Well, I guess I got pregnant three months later. I never ended up going back to, to work. So I graduated uh, college. Yeah. I graduated in 07. I got married in 07, got pregnant and we knew I wanted to stay home. And so we were never, it didn't seem like the right idea for me to go seeking out a job for a very short amount of time. And I remember it being hard at first just to like take care of the house and make food. And now I'm like, what? <laughs> and then it was hard to have a baby take care of the house and make food. And then it was hard to have two babies. And then it was hard to have four start a business, take right. care of the house. But it's a muscle that you develop just like with working out. And there are things for me now that just are not hard at all. Like there are certain things that when I was first married and that some people who follow me and send me messages 
they they say, how do you get this done? And I'm like, to be honest, that is just no longer hard. At some point it was though. And it's, it, was it is like a muscle that you develop. And so to an extent, you know, there are things that there, even with the way that you're saying you're structuring all of this, you are pushing yourself in some ways a little bit more each day or year or whatever to, to get to where you are. I love how it's you not all that. sunshine. <laughs> right. No. And I, but I feel like that's also really encouraging for anyone that just feels like they can't possibly add more. I mean, we've yeah. all had that feeling like I will break if I have to do this, or maybe there's like a health complication that comes up and you say, I can't handle this. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's just that initial, like, I'm going to get through this and I'm going to slip and fall. and I'm going to get back up. I'm going to try again. And it gets easier and easier. So for yeah. sure. And when you say it like and a health so complication, I've never, we never had to deal with anything like really hard like yeah. that. I Where just mean like regular hard. Yeah. Just like regular hard of like daily yeah. house and life and kids and, you know, trying to do other things while you have kids and all of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And my other tip for anyone that like, feels like or is being forced to add more of their life is again just planning don't let that last element you know taking care of yourself building support in your life those are the things they're like probably the most important to the infrastructure but then the planning becomes the technical part mm -hmm. and um, how you get that done you really need kind of a visual and a plan I love yeah. what's that quote. If you fail to plan, you plan yes, to fail. Yes, you plan to fail. <laughs> and we all, another thing, when you break it down by the hour, you see the time and you can get real honest with yourself about where you're wasting time. Because I have oh, a lot yeah. of people who tell me they don't have time. And then I know some more about their situation. And I'm like, you just don't want to. <laughs> you do yeah. have time. We yeah. all do. And I, I know for sure I have things like that that. I say, I don't have time for, I have time. I just don't want to yeah. so many things. <laughs> I just don't want to do. And time's a really nice, easy scapegoat for me. It is. My but husband loves you... to ask that question. Um, if I say I don't have time and he says that actually means it's not important to you. Yeah, so it is. It's just like, true. <laughs> yep, it's other just... things are more important. And yes. so you're, you're finding a way to get them done. And, and that, that might be okay. Certain things, you know, it yeah. just might be okay that you don't have time for them for oh, yeah. sure. But sometimes there's something you really truly want to do and you have yourself convinced, but when you break your day down by hours, it becomes really clear <laughs> whether or not mm -hmm. you have time or you don't, which you may or may not want to do. It's like a food journal. Yeah. You know, I'd rather uh -huh. just not look at that or my bank account or whatever thing it might be that you're, I don't want to go to the dentist to see what cavities I have, you know, a little bit easier just to not face it. Yeah. And I hear from a lot of people. It's funny. I went to a pinners conference for my planner. Oh yeah. I watched of your YouTube video about there. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it was interesting because I wasn't, it was the first environment where I wasn't surrounded by planning people. I was trying to I was trying to pull people in who were not planning people. So needless to say, it wasn't really worth my time. <laughs> right. But as far as what I noticed, everyone's excuse, they would come and look at the pretty planners because I've designed them to be very beautiful, very soothing. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. We have They're several. beautiful for your home. But they would say, oh, I wish I was a planner, but I just hate when I make a list and then I don't get it done. And then I have to move it to the next week. And I get that. You don't want to have yes. to rewrite. So that's, when I face when it. I think, that's when I think you need to take a cold, hard look at what you're rewriting. I mean, like, uh -huh. why is this not, why is this not getting done? I thought I had, I thought it was a priority. I wrote it down in my weekly plan, but it didn't happen in any of my days. And so that's when I look at those items before I move them. Some have to be moved, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I Just definitely, definitely have to move things. But yeah. if they're super important though, I, I can't. And I know the things that I can't move to the next one. But that makes me wonder though, for you, what motivates you? Because why not just keep moving it to the next week? What keeps you from doing that? 
Oh, I think a difficult question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's one I didn't prepare for. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> so I want to give an example here. So making like photo albums for my kids, like getting all the computer uh, the images. You're speaking of our my family. language. I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> like into a book. That has been moved in yep. my planner from year to year, month to month, probably for five years. And I- yep. 2016 <laughs> is the last book I have. Seriously. Five years. And that's one of those, those are one of those things that like, I really want it done. Same. It feels like a priority. And so I, I decided I have to look at this differently. It is not going to get done. So I thought, is this one of those things that I'm going to have to build some support? Maybe I can hire it done. I hired my Maybe daughter to do it. <laughs> yeah. I thought about yeah. that. She, yeah. Your sister's like, we had that talk. She's like, I just love it. I'm like, I should love it, but I don't. I and know. I think it's because I spend so much time on the computer for work. By the yeah. time it's time to like personal time, I don't want to do that. Right. But there are people out there who I could throw my mess of pictures to. Yeah. And they could do it. Fiverr. So what are those Guarantee things? Fiverr. Oh yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> so there's those things that are on your list. Um, what motivates the ones that I get done are the ones that I definitely have a, a purpose and a drive for or deadlines. Those are always good. To mm-hmm. have. Deadlines are good. Yes. Just say uh-huh. yes and worry about the details later. <laughs> <laughs> but for the things that I don't feel motivated to do, I think that's where you need to, to really look at, are they a priority or could I get someone's help to do these? Yeah. So. yeah. Or do, do they need to even be on my list at all? Are there there some things that it just really isn't truly important to get that Mm -hmm. thing done? And there are, we're coming up on Christmas. I don't know if this will go out later, but you know, that's, you have all these things you want to do for Christmas and then it gets to the end. I'm like, actually, that's not that important. Yeah, (laughs) I know. You want to build gingerbread houses, go to see the lights, go. Yeah. All the things. Christmas cards, just let it go. Yep. Yep. I let those go probably five, six years ago, I totally yeah. let that go. I'm like, okay, we have Facebook. Everybody needs to see my picture on the card <laughs> as cool as that will be. Go to my Instagram <laughs> account. It's on yeah, there. Just, if you want to see our family, just go to the Instagram account. I know yeah. that's, that's bad, but that is true that I, I dropped that one as well, but yeah, yeah there no, there's, Oh, sorry. No, no, you go ahead. There's something I know we both get the question for a lot and that is how do we get it done? And You know, I find that when you ask someone like you or me that has a lot going on, how do you get it done? I think people are really looking for like, literally, how do you fit it in your day? Yes. And so I would love to hear like your, sorry, you're the interviewee. I don't care. That's okay. (laughs) But like, how, like, what is a typical day? Like, what are you fitting into your hours? How are you able to get it done? And then maybe we can share that. So right now I have two hours a day. That's it for, I mean, obviously all through the morning and all of that, I'm getting done a lot of things that are just family related, but as far Mm -hmm. as moving the needle forward for the business, I have two hours a day. It's right now from about one to three is that's why I scheduled this at one o'clock because that's (laughs) a time when I know Luke takes the kid, some of the kids outside. Daniel goes down for his nap. Everybody just has kind of a off time. We don't have to worry about school. We already finished all of that, but like a typical mm-hmm. day right now, and it changes by seasons and by babies and things like that. But in the morning we do breakfast time, morning chores outside. I will sit down with my older two and do their math, actually older three. Now, now I have three that I do math with every morning handwriting. Luke's usually outside doing chores while I'm getting that done. And then Johanna usually takes our two-year-old upstairs to do her guitar lessons. He watches her do that. Ruth goes and does her violin. And then I clean up the kitchen. It's just all of that kind of stuff. By one o'clock, I make sure that my hair's done. My makeup's Mm -hmm. on. The dishes are done. Everything is done. We had lunch. That way I can focus and I'm not spending one to three cleaning up the kitchen. If the kitchen didn't get clean, which happens, it's going to have to stay messy while I record this podcast or do the things that when they wake up or whatever, not everybody's sleeping, obviously, but when people start coming back in at three, because they do, you know, we can clean the kitchen. Then we don't have to, I don't have to get it done. Now people can help me. My daughters can help me at three. My son can help um, my oldest son. So 
that's just my only secret is having a time during the day where I just only work on something that I want to accomplish the goals, you know, laundry, uh, all that happens outside during other hours. And then, like you said, because of all the things now that I do like YouTube and all of that, I have to hire a ton of people. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think uh, that that's what people need to hear. They can't yeah. look your life or our life and think they must be super women. <laughs> yeah. And it's been a process over time. It didn't start like that. It's just been each year you just add something here and add something there. And so the part that's required of me is creating the content for other people to put it together into a blog post, into a video, into a podcast. I have to be here physically creating the content, but other than that, I don't you have turn to it do over. That. Yeah. yeah. Then I turn it over. Right. <laughs> so then after three, are you back in family mode? It's like the rest of the day, just pretty life. much. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. We have evening activities, cleanup, dinner, chores. Now, are you sometimes like filming? Like if you're doing a, you know, day in the life, yes. the camera comes out while you're. Yes. Like- oh yes. Oh yes. Lots of that. So it's and like actually that's still why in your mind a lot of the time, but you're not physically working on it. True. And, and there are ton- lots of that because I love videos that allow me to do that mm-hmm. so that I, you know, I can, it just is something that I can do while I'm taking care of my family. So if it's like a, a, what we eat in a week video or something, which is what I'm shooting today, like not today, but this whole week, I've been shooting what we eat in a week video. It's pretty easy to just get the camera out and set it up while I'm cooking. And then I spend the nap time right now doing the voiceovers for that. So I'll have a list of all the recipes that were on it, all the meals that I made. And then I'll do my intro, my outro talking about each thing. And then all the rest of it's pretty much silent. So that way the the house can be in all kinds of hustle and bustle and you're still filming it. You know, I like doing things like that, but yeah, the camera does definitely come out whenever kids are awake for sure. I love that. Um, yeah. Do you want to hear what my day usually? Yes, I do. I do. I was (laughs) waiting for it. Come on. (laughs) Uh, very, very similar to yours, but, um, I, my husband leaves early for work about six 30. And so I try to fit in three hours a day. And usually that's one hour in the morning before the kids are awake. Yeah. So he usually leaves and I try to, and before I even wake up, that's when I need to make the plan the night before. Like I got to know what I'm waking up to do. And I got to know that it has to get done from six 30 to seven 30. Yeah. (laughs) Otherwise I'm not crawling out of bed. So, um, yeah, I'll just wake up early and try to fit in an hour of work. And I think that's also a good time for, you know, self-care, but I've, as I've tried to like force that stuff, when I first wake up, I've learned that I'm a, uh, I'm an empty my cup first person rather than fill my cup first person. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I need to get some of those tasks done before I can then kind of take care of myself and fill my cup. So, so I like to just tick off some of those things on my list early in the morning. And then I do some yoga kids are up, we get breakfast. And that's one of the things I've built support in. I have my uh, 15 year old. She's our breakfast girl. She makes from scratch breakfast every morning. (laughs) Don't you love teenagers? Oh yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, she's actually going to a couple classes at the high school now and they're in the morning oh. last trimester was in the <laughs> afternoon so now I'm training the 13 year old right <laughs> yes you can do that like I can't that. think about breakfast so I've built that support yes so while they're doing that I'm kind of just tidying up the house and getting myself ready and all the kids ready and then we have um an hour of history or science together I do that group style so I'm just teaching you know one yes. lesson yeah. or or we ditch all that and maybe just create something together. So I usually, I've been spending one hour on homeschool myself a day. Um, so, and then the tutor comes and she does their kind of math language arts. And that's really good for me. Cause I feel like if I had to focus on that 
in my brain, plus what I had to do for work, I feel like I get mental exhaustion on those days. Mm-hmm. You know, I've yes. had to fill in and do that. And it's just, it's just a lot. It's pretty draining. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so those are the two hours I'm working. Kids know like the door is shut. It's locked. <laughs> like don't, uh, you know, mom is working. Is that that's like funny. writing blog posts, keyword research, uh-huh. sending emails? Yep. That's why I'm like filing design. all the footage and sending it to my video editor. I do answer the, if I didn't get the emails answered in the morning, um, I will like answer emails and messages and stuff in that time. But I, but I time myself. That's another tip. Like keep a timer. If you've got some tasks that, you know, like I'm going to answer Instagram messages or get up an Instagram post. Instagram can also suck you in. Uh, It sucks you in without little, without much reward. There are so many tasks that like, you feel like you're really doing something. But it's you're just not like out of you. <laughs> you're not actually getting anything done. No. And that that's a whole that's another topic. That is that's a whole that's other conversation. Own. It really is though, but people do that. They're like, Yeah. That's why I asked you, like, what's work? Because there are certain things that are things you have to do. You do mm-hmm. to an extent, you have to do them, but they're not like the stuff that's really going to move you ahead on your goals. Yeah. And so if those have to go, then those are the first things to go. Yeah. Yeah. And they should be. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tutor time and then we have lunch. And again, so now I've trained my 13 year old to make breakfast. So now my 15 year old's home. That's actually what's going on right now. She's making my lunch. Yeah. (laughs) And now they're trying to pile on the door. Just a minute. (laughs) (laughs) We're almost done. (laughs) And then, so then, um, what we do from about one to three, I always go on a 20 minute walk. That's what I'll do here. Um, that just really helps my brain switch from work mode to kid mode. So from one to three, sometimes my kids are just involved in creating pro- projects and I can keep working or that might be when I film or that might be when I, you know, actually make projects like hands-on, not computer-based work, but yes, that might be yeah. like, you know, when I decorate a room for a home tour and, but I still get to be with the kids and we're still talking. Yeah, so there are certain things. Like when I say I work for two hours a day, there are certain things just like you, where it can happen in the hours of kids being yeah. around, you know, with the right. nature of our businesses, that's possible. Uh-huh. And that's such a blessing. I think that we can do yeah. that at home and that they get to see us do that mm-hmm. and be a part of it. So, so that's kind of the the later afternoon hours. And then hubby comes home at four 30. And if I, if I need to throw in some more work or I'm just not feeling dinner, he'll help (laughs) That's that's more support. Or I just, I enjoy making dinner at that time with a kid or two. And, and then the evenings I try to just, that's just, you know, clean up laundry. Yeah. yeah, Family stuff. Just be together. Yeah. Yeah. Take them around to gymnastics or whatever. Yeah. So. It changes by what activities you have going on, going on, what season it is, things like that. But yeah, it's, it's always something we were talking the other day. We have this really cool bike trail near where we live. And I was like, Luke, why do we never go to that? And I'm like, Oh, I know we're never <laughs> sitting around saying, what should we do right now? That's, That's not, not a thing like- <laughs> that exists like that. If it did, I'm sure we'd come up with that, but it never happens because there's so much just with keeping our family fed and clothed and, you know, dishes okay. done. So, yeah, well, that's fun to hear how, you know, we are able to build these careers off of a few hours of work. I think people hopefully come away encouraged. They can build new hobbies. They can build a business. They can do more. They can add more to their lives if they just, yeah. just get um, disciplined, structured, consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like this afternoon nap slot, this has been going on since my oldest was probably one or two. I didn't get it figured out right away for sure. Mm -hmm. But back then I was learning to sew. I was learning to bake bread. I've always had those hours and here my daughter's turning 13 tomorrow. It's the same routine every single day, one to three. Now I'm using it for business time. I used to use it for sourdough kefir you know, now all those things are easy for me because they're so familiar, but I was learning, I was experimenting, gardening, you know, Mm -hmm. there's things you want to learn. And if you build that structure, even a mom can do that. I think so too. 
it's good to fill our lives. You know, I, I feel blessed having a full day and I like to be busy. And you talked a bit about your planners. They are beautiful. We have them on our shelves. We have your notebooks too. Yeah. Tell us where you can get those right now because it's almost a new year. So it's the perfect time. Right. You're finding your, so I have your planner. So tidbits is my blog. And so then I have my product line so they can go to tidbitsplanners.com and find all the planning products. Or if they just love, you know, stationary notebooks, that kind of thing. I've got, you know, the notebooks, journals, sketchbooks, little mini notebooks, pen holders. There's just lots of, lots of things for the, you know, yeah. <laughs> the we paper use the planner there. I do have digital cover. Um, oh, you have digital ones too. Uh-huh. They can print yeah. off and put in like a little binder or something. Well, there's printable, but then there's digital. If they like to use an iPad. Oh, oh. Can, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay. I'm not a digital planner, but it is a cool product. For right. Like that. Yeah. Um, we have the hard covered notebooks for each of the kids. So they do their handwriting in them. Yeah. They're nice. And it's nice because they're different colors. So we know who's is who's and they that's still awesome. look nice. Now yeah. I, my, one of mine needs a new one. Cause it doesn't look nice anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. She used and well used. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, if your listeners want to save some money, they're welcome to use the coupon code, my tidbits planner. That'll give okay. them 20, 20% off if they're Ooh, okay. want to shop and save. Yeah. I'll, I'll uh, keep that up for them. Awesome. I will link that also down in the description and in the show notes and put the code in case you need to see it. But yeah, that'll all be down there. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast. We truly do love our Tidbits Planner. So make sure to check those out over at tidbitsplanners.com. And as always, thank you so much for listening. And I'll see you in the next episode of the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast. Mm-hmm.